فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The reason is because the wudu was there in the first place. The wudu was there in the first place. We're now doubtful whether what? Whether you broke your wudu. So we stick with the certainty and we leave off that. The Maliki will come and say, No, you've broken your wudu. Why? Al yaqinu la yazulu bi shak. Kayf al Malikiya al yaqinu la yazulu. We use the same qaida. They said, Naam. Why? They said, Biqa'u salati fi dimmatika. The salat to be on your neck. It is certainty that the salah is on your neck. You have to come with it. That's the yaqeen. We, we know that's mutayaqan, that you have to come with it. We can't remove that certainty of you having to come with the prayer for something we're doubtful. So what did they say? You have to come with the wudu. And you have to do, and you have to do the wudu. So my brothers, here what we learn is, if you do not know these masail and you haven't observed it like that and you haven't got the understanding and the comprehension like that on these issues, brothers and sisters, khalal, khalal, deficiency comes. Are you with me? And you will force and you will come with things that are wrong. Are you with me, brothers? So it is important that the person observes Huh? That he observes that. It's very important that the person observes that. These khilafat. So we mention, if I go over it again, the types of qawaid al fiqhiya there is. We said there is. First one is al qawaid, which is al muttafaqu alayha, which is al qawaid al kulliyat al kubra, which we said is five, and some they add a sixth one to it, which is i'mal al kalami, aw la min ihmali. The second one which we said, which is Al-Qawaid Al-Mukhtalafu Fiha, but it's known as Qawaid Al-Kubra, Al-Kulliya, sorry, Al-Qawaid Al-Kulliya Adhiqu Majalan. But it is what? It's Sukhra. Smaller than the previously mentioned one, which is the five or the six. An example for that was what? Al-Ijtihadu la yanqudu bil-Ijtihad. The third one which we said is Al-Qawaid Al-Lati Takhtasu Bibabin Duna Bab. It's the qawaid that are specific to a particular chapter and this is known as, it is known as dawabid. It is known as al-dawabid. And we gave the example for, for, for that which is kullu ma sahha bay'u sahha rahnu. Anything you can sell, you could do rahnu with. And we also gave the qa'idah kullu ghuslin sababuhu qablahu fahuwa wajibun. Wa kullu ghuslin sababuhu, sababuhu ba'duhu فهو مستحب فهو بعده كل غسل سببه بعده فهو مستحب We said that And that we said all of that is ضابط The fourth one was what? قواعد المذهبية قواعد which are what? مذهب related قواعد We gave the example لا حجة مع الاحتمال الناشئ عن دليل That's rooted from the evidence we said this is a, this is a qa'idah taken by who? The Hanafiya and the Hanabil Shafi'iyah don't take it and they don't implement it. And then I went on to saying that's the first differences and the khilafat that occur, occur within the madhahib. There are other types which is ikhtilaf which is where this mas'ala that we have which qa'idah should we take it back to? Are you with me? For example, at tahni'ah greetings. What's the asal for greetings? Is greetings ibadah or is it an ibadah? If it's an ibadah, then al asal for ibadah, ibadah, at tawqifiya. If it is ibadah, then it's what? It is ibadah is permissible. Ruqya is ruqya ibadah or is it ibadah? Then the discussion for me and you about the issue of why are you doing tajruba? Why are you doing experiment? First of all, let's agree that it's an ibadah or it's an adah. Hadihi awalan. You with me? The third, the, 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 the third type, which is what? اختلاف فقهي بسبب كيفية الاندراج الفرع في القاعدة. How should we bring this far into the qaida? We're using the same qaida, but everyone's perceiving it differently in the way they want to bring it in. And my beloved brothers and sisters, 
uh, due to the short time, um, and since I've spoken about this before, and I think the time is getting, so I'm going to have to leave off Nash'at wa Tadweenu Ilm al Qawaid al Fiqih and go over it very fast, which is the third point. Are you with me? This is the third point after the Ta'rif al Qawaid al Fiqih. We spoke about the types of Qawaid al Fiqih, right? I'm going to now have to go over Nash'at wa Tadweenu Ilm al Qawaid al Fiqih. How Qawaid al Fiqih came into existence and what not. Qawaid al Fiqih, my beloved brothers and sisters, it came with the Qur'an. And it came with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are you with me? And we also find that the Sahabas, they were making Qawaid with their statements, such as Umar radiallahu anhu's statement, مَقَاطِعُ الْحُقُوقِ عِنْدَ الشُّرُوطِ Which Imam al-Bukhari, who brings it مُعَلَّقًا. Are you with me? And of course, uh, the Qa'idah, uh, which I mentioned that Imam uh, Al Imam Amir uh, Mu'minin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, which is Hadihi ala ma naqdi wa tilka ala ma qadayna, which the qa'idah was taken from it is al ijtihadu la yunqadu bil ijtihad. Then the Sahabas were also making qawaid. Are you with me, brothers? And the tabi'een, the tabi'een, such as Al Qadi Shurayh uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. He, uh, as Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, brings in his sahih, mu'alakan as well. Man sharat ala nafsi ta'i'an ghayra mukrah fahu alayhi. Qawaid. La yunsabu ila sakitin qawlan. The one who's silent, you can't attribute a speech to him. Al-Rukhas. Uh, if the sharia gives you an ease in a matter, la yata'adda biha mahalluha. It does not surpass its needs, or surpass its four points. And then, of course, Muhammad bin Hassan al-Shaybani and Abu Yusuf and Imam al-Shafi'i, if you look at Kitab al-Um, Qawaid after Qawaid, you will see in it. You will see uh, Qawaid. But, my beloved brothers and sisters, the first person who came and he actually wrote a book in Qawaid uh, as a subject, as a field. Uh, the earliest person is... Abu Tahir Muhammad ibn Muhammad al Dabbas, Rahimahullah, who was from the Fuqara, uh, Fuqaha, sorry, he was from the Fuqaha of the third or the fourth generation. Um, and he compiled the most important qawaid of the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa. And he brought 17 qawaid together. 17, 17 qawaid, which were kulliya. Abu Tahir, the reason why many people jump him and they they, they miss him out and they only jump to who? Abu Hassan al Karhi. They jump him instead of mentioning him, they jump to uh, Abu Hassan al Karhi. It's because Abu Tahir was a blind individual. He was blind. And he used to repeat those qawaid every single night in his masjid. He would repeat it after, and the people would write it from him. They would write it from him and they transmitted it from him. Uh, so he was the first person who could actually be said he was given importance to the qawaid. But the thing is, there's no written book of his or his works. No, there's no book attributed to him by name that says it. Whereas Abu Hassan al karqi who died the year 340 Hijriya, are you with me? He has a book known as Usul al karqi Are you with me? And he's a Hanafi scholar. And as you can see, the Hanaf were the first people to bring out Qawaid al fiqiyya They were the first. And then after him came Abu Zayd al dabusi and he wrote his kitab, Ta'seez al uh, And he added many more qawaid onto it. And he also mentioned a great, a great large amount of sub-branches of fiqh that are connected to that qawaid. Um, but even though, if you look at Abu, Abu Zayd al-Dabusi, if you look at him, the qawaid that he mentions, and if you can look at them, they can really be referred to, a lot of them is qawaid madhabiya. Qawaid that are pertaining to the madhab of the Hanaf. Not only just the Ahnaf, rather his Qawaid are more set down for the Khilaf, the disputes between Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani and Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. Are you with me? Um, and etc. Then, what do you call it, uh, came an Imam al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam rahimahullah ta'ala, who died the year 606. And he wrote his kitab, Qawaid al Ahkam fi Masalih al Anam. Um, so now, if I go over the books that are written in Qawaid al Fiqiyya by Madhabs, it's as follows. The first person who wrote it, 
uh, is uh, uh, as a book that's read is uh, Abu Madhab al Hanafiya is number one uh, Usul al Karqi who died in year 340 Hijriya. Uh, the second one is Ta'sis al Nadar by Abi Zayd al Dabusi who died in year 430. Then Al Ashbah wal Nadair by Ibn Nujayim who died in year 970. Uh, that was the Hanafi. The Malikiyah, they have Kitab al Furuq by Imam al Qarafi, who died in 684. And we have the book Al Qawaid by Muhammad ibn Muhammad al Muqri, who died in 758. We have Al Idah al Masalik ila Qawaid al Imam Malik by Ahmed ibn Yahya, who died in 914. Shafi'iyah, the Shafi'iyah, they have Al Izm ibn Abdul Salam. Rahimahullah ta'ala who died in year 660 his kitab Qawaid al Hakam fi Masali and Fi Masali Hid Alam. Al Izm Abd Salam's Qawaid, the way he tries to do it is that every Qa'idah he tries to bring it back to the Qa'idah which says Dal ul Mafasid Ola min Jalbi al Masalih. He tries to just bring it back to every every meta, he tries to bring it back to that Qa'idah. So his book is more about the Masalih, that this religion has come here. To, be, to work for your maslaha, your benefit. Number two is Al Ashbah wa Nadair by Tajuddin Abdul Wahid Abdul Wahab al Subki, who died in the year 771. Oh, he died in the year 771, Al Ashbah wa by Suyuti. And we're going to speak about that more in details, inshallah ta'ala, when we start our kitab, Al Faraid al Bahia, Fi Nadbi Qawaid al Fiqiyya. The Faraid al Bahia is actually a Poetry of this kitab al Ashbah al Nadair by Suyuti. Ahdal, his kitab al Faraid al Bahia, is a, a poetry form of the kitab al Ashbah al Nadair. And Ashbah al Nadair by Suyuti is what? It is a nathar, it's not a poetry. He died in 911. The Hanabila, they have Al Qawaid al Nuraniya by Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, who died in 728. And also the book Taqreer al Qawaid with Tahrir al Fawaid by Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, who died the year 795. Of course, Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimullah's kitab, is also there. The Alam, the Alam al Muwakkirin, is also there. Um, Istimdad al Qawaid al Fiqiyya, where is Qawaid al Fiqiyya rooted from? Qawaid al Fiqiyya is rooted, as I said, Al Kitabu, Wal Sunnah, Wal Ijma' Wal Qiyas, Wal Usul al Sharia, Wal Maqasidiha. It is taken from the Kitab of Allah Taala, from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the Ijma, the consent, from the Qiyas analogy. It is also taken from the Usul Sharia wa Maqasidiha. Is Qawaid al Fiqiyya taken from the Arabic language? No, Usul al Fiqh is like it. Usul al Fiqh is taken from the Arabic language. Are you with me? And when you look at the Alfab, Alfad al Umum, are you with me? Dalalat al Alfad is language. This shows Mutlaq, this shows Muqayyad, this shows Umum. Uh, this is Lugha, that's where they got it from, the language. Like in Qawaid al Fiqh, it's not taken from the language. It's not taken from the? How do you, how do, what do we say that it's taken from? Al Kitabu? Or Sunnah? Then why is it that? Because the Hukum Shafiqi comes before it. There's no room for language. Does that make sense? There's no room for it. Okay, for example, the Kitab of Allah, example for that is the Qaida al Mushakkatu Tatribu Taysir, which we mentioned is from the Qawaid al Mutafaqi Aliha. Which is also known as Al Qawaid Al Kulliyat Al Kubra, the five comprehensive Qawaid that we spoke about, which are unanimously agreed upon. It's taken from the Quran, which Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, Yuridu Allahu, Yuridu Allahu, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wants for you, Yuridu Allahu bikum al Usra, Wala Yuridu bikum al Usra. Allah wants ease for you, He does not want hardship for you. Inna ma'al Usri Usra, Yuridu Allahu an yukhaffifa ankum, wa khulika al Islam ba'ifa. It's taken from that. So you see, al mashaqqa to tajlib al taysir is taken from what? It is taken from the Qur'an. Also, al yaqeen la yazulu bi shak Certainty cannot be removed with doubt. It's taken from the what? Hadith of Abdullah ibn Zayd, which is in Sahihain. When the Prophet ﷺ, a man complained to him, shukya ila Rasulillah صلى الله عليه وسلم, al-rajul yajidu fi salatihi shay'an. Ayakta'u salah. A man came, uh, uh, complained to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, a person finds something, he thinks something's coming out of his, his back. So should he leave the prayer? Should he disconnect the prayer? The Prophet Sallallahu said to him, لا, no. حتى يسمع صوتا ها, أو يجد ريحا. Unless he hears a noise or he smells the, uh, the odor or the smell. So certainty is the only way you can get rid of it. Also the ijma' 
Qa'id al-Faqih is taken from Ijma' which is what? The scholars unanimously agreed upon this Qa'idah which is لَجْتِهَادَ مَعَ nasi. You can't do ijtihad when there's a text there. This is a Qa'idah, Fiqiyah. This Qa'idah's must, istidad is from the Ijma' that you can't do you can't do taqdimu al ijtihadi ala nusus you can't do you can't give precedence to ijtihad when there are textual evidences are you with me ijtihada ma al nasi as for qiyas as a qaida fiqhiya and usul uh, the usul of the sharia wa maqasidiha and its objectives you all have to do homework on that and get it inshallah ta'ala an example for that bi al karim I'm now going to conclude with the last point, which is Fawaid Dirasat al Qawaid al Fiqiyah. What is the benefit and why should I go out of my way and study Qawaid al Fiqiyah? Why should I go out of my way and study Qawaid al Fiqiyah? Why? What is the reason one should go out of his way and study Qawaid al Fiqiyah? My beloved brothers and sisters, the reasons of studying Qawaid al Fiqiyah is many. The first one is Qawaid al Fiqiyah gives you, brothers, Dabd al Fiqh. Once you study Qawaid al-Fiqh, you will be able to narrow down and bring together many sub-branches that if you went out of your way for decades, you would never be able to gain. You won't be able to get it. But the Qawaid al-Fiqh will bring it for you easily and nicely. تَجْمَعُ الْفُرُوعَ الْمُتَنَاثِرَةِ تَحْتَ قَاعِدَةٍ وَحِدَةٍ One Qawaidah will suffice you from so many... I'm sitting here, umur bimaqasidiha. Everything you bring for me, I'll look at it and say, umur bimaqasidiha. I've never heard of it before, but I have this qa'idah with me. Instead of going out of my way and studying every far'ah, I save myself time of just learning the qawaid. And that's very important, brothers. That's one of the biggest things that qawaid fiqh, our, our life is short. Al umru qasira. Time is very short. You're not going to live forever. So what are you going to do? You're going to study what's more, more important than what's, what's less important. Sah? Qawaid al fiqhiya is what gives you dabt al-fiqh. So many issues, you just bring all under one, one place. It's well organized in your brain. Chapter this, chapter, everything is all organized for you. And the example is al-umur bi maqasidiha. Second benefit that you get from it is no doubt husul al-ajr al-ukhrawi. You're going to get reward in the hereafter. Of course, the hadith, مَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدين. Anyone who Allah wants good for him, he makes him understand the religion in detail. So when you study Qawaid al-Fiqiyya and you know the Ma'rifatul Ilali wa Maqasid al-Shari'a and the Hikam, the wisdoms and the reasons behind matters. Are you with me, brothers? And you study Qawaid al-Fiqiyya, of course you're going to get reward for it. Allah is going to give you ajr subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, also, the other benefit that you get from it is معرفت uh, علل الأحكام وحكمها. You actually learn the reasonings behind why Allah legislated this issue. What's the wisdom in it? What's the hikma? Why? Why did Allah تبارك وتعالى say this? Are you need brothers? And since it is معرفت علل الأحكام وحكمها, since you know the reasoning. Are you with me, brothers? Now that you've understood the reason behind something, you're able to give fatwa when a nazila comes. A nazila means what? A contemporary issue hits, you are able to do the correct verdict. For example, somebody harms a person over the internet. Easily you're going to look at it and say, الضرر, الضرر يزال. Internet is something new. Somebody tries to harm somebody through the mobile phone. So you'll be able to <coughs> give the fatwa, the qa'ida that you are using, because you know that illa is the dharar. It doesn't matter where, how it comes. You know, ma'rifatul, you understand the illa of what has to be removed. And what has to be got rid of is the harm. And that harm, it doesn't matter the way it comes to you from. Are you with me, brothers? So you're just going to be looking at the illa, you're going to be looking at the hikmah, the wisdom behind it, that's all you're going to follow. The end of the scholars, what do they say? Al-hukmu yaduru ma'illati wujud al-wa'adama, sah? The ruling revolves around the illa, whether it's absent or it's not. Are you with me, brothers? 
Alcohol is liquid and water is liquid. Why is alcohol haram for? The illa, why is haram for is what? Iskar, it intoxicates you. When that, that word iskar is present in a liquid, it's haram. When that is absent, it's halal. Does that make sense? So if somebody says to you, I'm not allowed to drink alcohol, why? I don't know, I'm just not allowed to. He hasn't understood the what? He hasn't understood that. So then he's going to be, tomorrow, if the alcohol is made into powder, he's going to say it's permissible because I was not allowed the liquid. It was the liquid what was not allowed. He thinks the illa is the liquid. Are you with me, brothers? But because you know the illa, and you know the hikmah and the reason, and this is, this is mithal only, you would understand. Last but not least, my brothers, is, and there are many more, it is, Qawa'id al fiqhiyya will give you your fatawat and your answers that you give will be sadeed, be correct, and sawab. And you will have consistency in your verdict. Consistency. Not inconsistency in your verdict. A lot of people, they give an answer to an issue, they say, هذا الراجح. This is the strongest opinion. And then tomorrow, another issue, they say, this is rajah. When in reality, you would automatically say you've contradicted yourself. You can't have. It's impossible for you to do tarjih of that opinion if you yesterday done tarjih of this opinion. If you strengthened that opinion yesterday, you could not have strengthened this opinion today. Uh, an example for that would be the issue of Salatu al Jum'ah. Are you with me, brothers? Salatu al Jum'ah. There are many examples. I'm just going to try to give you two. Salatu al Jum'ah. Is Salatu al Jum'ah's obligation independent or is it an exchange from Salatu al Dhuhr? If the answer of that question depends on the ruling that you give, let's look at the example. If a person says, Are you with me? Then the fuqaha, there's a different, there's an issue they differ upon. Salatul Jum'ah, can it, is it prayed by the Zawal or Qabla Zawal? After the Zenith or before the Zenith? The fuqaha are different. There's Baba', there's Khilafat, there's Rasail which are written, there's Rudud. There's, I'm on a Multaqa called Multaqa al Hadith. And discussions keep coming back and front in discussions. Huh? Nikash. Nikash ilmi. So, the issue here is now here. If you believe that Salatul Jum'ah, its obligation is an exchange of Salatul Dhuhr. Salatul Jum'ah is a badal. Its obligation is just taking the place of Salatul Dhuhr. If you believe that, then for you, the Salatul if it's a badal, then it has to be what? The time that Dhuhr is prayed, which is Ba'd al-Zawal. Are you with me? If you don't believe it's a badal and you believe it's, it's the faridha here is what is istiqlal, it's independent from it, then it's what? Qabla zawal. If you believe, pay attention here, if you believe that it is independent from it and it is not badal, it is independent. Are you with me, brothers? If you believe it's independent from it, then your answer here is going to be what? Qabla is zawal. So if you believe Salatul Jum'ah is independent from Salatul Dhuhr in its obligation. Are you allowed to say that you can combine between Jum'ah and Asr? No. If you do, then it shows that you're contradicting yourself. Automatically, I'm not even going to, I don't need to ask you that. I automatically know since you said that, are you with me? That you can, that Dhuhr and Jum'ah, it's the, the, the fard of Jum'ah is independent from Dhuhr. And you've chosen the opinion that it is prayed qabla zawal, automatically I know for you it is not permissible to say what? Al jam'a bayna salatul. Are you with me? And of course, salatul eidain. If Eid comes on the day of what? And you're of the opinion that Eid is wajib, so you're consistent, your fatwa has to be consistent here. If Eid happens on the day of Jum'ah, for you, if Eid is wajib, then consistency. You can't cut the, you can't cut the, the road. The same issue happens, my beloved brothers and sisters is the issue of nikah, nikah, nikah. For you, nikah, what is it? Is nikah the intimacy or is it contract? Which, is, which of those definitions? What do you define nikah as? Do you think that nikah in the sharia, when it says nikah, is meant by, khilaf is qa'im, la shakka wa even in the Arabic language, nakahatil matar al ard, the rain married the earth, meaning it went into it. So it, some people say that it's intimacy. 
Are you with me? That if a man divorces his wife, Allah Taala wa Taala three times and he finishes the divorce, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Hatta tanki hazojan ghayra," until another man marries. The marriage, marrying of the man here is meant for intimacy. Are you with me, brothers? So, um, which of those two opinions do you take? Do you take that nikah is intimacy, or do you take it's a contract? It's the aqd. If you take the aqd, then rulings are specific for you. When it comes to the issue of nikah, basically later when divorce happens and whatnot, there's your fatwa is going to go one way away. It has to be consistent on that. And the person who says it's, 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 it's not the contract, rather it's the intimacy, his fatwa has to go on another path. The person who doesn't know the asal of the mas'ala and doesn't have, hasn't got qawa'id al fiqiyah in place and doesn't know what is asal and what is... He's going to have what? Idhirab, contradiction in his fatwa and he's not going to have consistency and you can see right through him that he's a person who is what? He's speaking without knowledge. He's speaking what? Without knowledge. And Allah wa Taala knows best, my beloved brothers and sisters, anything which I have said that was wrong and incorrect for innahu minni wa min ash-shaytani wallahu wa rasuluhu bari'ani minhu subhanaka allahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh